Hello, my name is Ash. Hope you're enjoying the last week before the holidays. But forget pleasantries, acquire Inquisition. Mark Dara, Bioware's executive producer for the Dragon Age franchise, released an update on Dragon Age Inquisition. You can read it on blog.bioware.com or you can stay and listen a while as I give you a rundown of all info and speculation that accompanied this update. Let's get started. The main storyline for Dragon Age is playable from beginning to end. PAX Prime's 30 minute snippet of gameplay is just a taste of what's to come. With the main part of Inquisition out of the way, Bioware is now capable of scaling properly for a timely release this fall. If you live locally in Edmonton and are looking for a job, Electronic Arts and Bioware are still looking for temporary, full-time QA testers. The position is most likely for Inquisition, so if you're a responsible sort capable of delivering great feedback, have a careful look at the EA Careers page in the links of the video's description. NDAs and all that jazz. Bioware is also working on voiceovers for the quoted large parts of the game. The only voices revealed for the game are actors for the male Inquisitor, Morgan, Varric, Cassandra, and Vivienne. Colin too, if you include Greg Ellis's 2012 leak of his voiceover session. Music is also in the works. Different art and in-game renders were revealed in the post. Here's a rundown of everything so far, however, a quick reminder that all of the following is pre-alpha work. None of this content is guaranteed to be part of the finished product. Picture 1 includes an assortment of armors, specifically for the Inquisition faction, based on the logo. These include variations for both female and males. Considering the armor available, the front two on the right are for male and female warriors based on the shoulder pads. The front left is rogue armor, as its arms and wrists are protected but noticeably less metal guards. The back row has armor for mages, as well as what seems to be a cutoff of canari armor in the back row, based on the design of its neck, most likely Sarabas. Speculating a little bit more, the front armors have parts adorned on the shoulder pads. I like to imagine these are from Orlesian influence, similar to the little adornments across the bulk of Morrigan's Inquisition dress. In the next picture, we see a model of the male elf that has a style almost Ferelden like given the fox fur wrapping across the torso and the strewn, slightly tattered travel garb. But the most poignant detail is the elven model, which shows a good mix of Origins elven years as well as a relaxed combination of DA2 and Origins face for elves. Next are two forest pictures from the game displaying the beauty of Frostbite's engine. However, this forest is something we've seen before. Not fully, but part of the concept art we've seen in, with the statues in the background. Next we see our first Canari model for the Inquisitor, with war paint, and slight stubble. It seems the paint styling is more tribal in comparison to what we've seen with Dalish tattoos, just like the Tal Vashoth and Canari of DA2, albeit with more color. Noticeably, it may be that different parts of face paint are changeable, as the beard for the left and right stay the same, whereas the upper face has a different pattern. Horns, or lack thereof, have yet to be addressed, only the fact that your character can have this type of horns. Dead bodies seem familiar to what we've seen after the Crestwood Village burning down in the PAX Prime gameplay. These most likely are not living corpses, which we have fought previously in the past two games. The following scene is definitely from Orlay. The back portraits have Empress Selene's face on them, and the embellishments on the tables and walls indicate Orlesian culture. While we don't know why so much of the furniture is tossed about in the dining hall, we may see the reasoning behind it in the future. I may well be wrong, but this looks like a deserted base that the Inquisition may be able to take over. It's a well-constructed hall with wood and stone, so possibly not a prison. Barrels, bags, and supplies are all across the floor, and the room also has a graded skylight. It may be untidy, but it seems livable. Finally, the village. What some speculate to be part of Red Cliff Village, these pictures showcase the gradual changes to build and enhance the village into a natural environment. If I have to note one thing, I will say it's strange how this area isn't affected by the veil. The text listed even describes the location with a cool, wet atmosphere with a pale gray sky. I'm curious whether the Inquisition will cross villages both isolated and ignorant of the veil tearing and the rifts across different parts of Thetis. Unfortunately, we'll remain unknowing as that's all Bioware shares in this post. Dragon Age Inquisition comes out fall 2014, with the Dragon Age Keep beta sending out invites very, very soon. All the best to everyone this holiday season. Hope you enjoyed this video. Like and favorite if you enjoyed hearing more Inquisition news before the new year. 
Thank you, Bioware. Take care, everyone. I will see you with more Dragon Age Inquisition news in 2014.